I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Now, if you've seen any of my build videos, I always end them by saying, check your power header for shorts, right? That's become sort of a signature phrase from the channel. And sometimes I get people asking me, how do I do that? What does it mean to check the power header for shorts? And I understand a lot of my viewers are beginners. They're just starting out. So it won't hurt for me to actually show you how to do that at least once, right? Also, while I'm doing this video, I figured I'd ask people in the community for other suggestions of things that you can check before you power on a module to make sure you don't get that magic smoke, to make sure you don't burn anything, to make sure you don't get that nasty smell. So I wrote down a few of the suggestions that I got from people here. I'm gonna try to go over all of them. So first, you're gonna be using a multimeter, any kind of multimeter. This is a kind of a nice fancy one. It doesn't need to be fancy one like this but you do need it to have something called the continuity meter so the continuity mode on a multimeter is that mode that beeps when you touch both probes together like this and on this multimeter you put it on the ohm meter the resistance meter and you press the blue button and now I get that nice solid beep when the probes touch so that means that anything that shorts Anything that connects both probes is going to beep. So here, for example, here's this panel. This panel does not conduct, right? Because it's probably anodized aluminum. How about here? Aha! So the Eurorack rails conduct, okay? So there are two kinds of power connectors that are used in Eurorack modules. One is the 10 pin, which is the most common that you see nowadays. And the other is the 16 pin, which is more old school. It uses some more pins that are available in the Eurorack convention that are not so commonly used anymore. The Eurorack convention is that you have 16 pins, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? And here's your boxed header. And here's the key on the right side, okay? So these pairs are the same thing. So you have two pins for each thing, right? The bottom most one is always gonna be minus 12 volts. And on the module, that's what's usually gonna be indicated somehow. Like this one has this big white line over here. This one doesn't say anything, but you know because of the box header. And that's also indicated by the red line on the power cable itself. So this is minus 12. Then we have three pairs, which are ground. Ground. Which you're actually supposed to call zero volts. Then we have plus 12 right here. And that's gonna be enough for the 10 pin header right here. However, Eurorack also affords you a plus five volts. And then these two are not really used by any module I know. There are probably some module out there from the beginning of Eurorack that uses them. They're supposed to be gate and CV buses. But like I said, nobody really uses them these days. These are the ones that you actually need to be concerned with. And on most modules, only these ones right here. So let's check it out. I have my multimeter set to continuity mode. I'll double check if it's beeping just to make sure it didn't go to a different mode or turn off or something like that. And basically we wanna make sure that none of the power rails are touching ground. None of them are shorted to ground. And we also wanna make sure that the power rails are not shorting to each other. So there are three simple checks you can do. One is touch the two bottom ones here, which are minus 12, and any of the six middle pins over here and nothing's beeping, right? And now we check with the top one, which is plus 12 volts. Again, nothing beeps. That means I do not have a short from minus 12 to ground, nor minus 12 to plus 12. And now we check from plus 12 to ground. And again, no shorting, right? This is what you'd hear if there was a short. If there was a short, it might mean you made some kind of a bridge over here when you were soldering or somewhere down the line, you have a short. So now you have uh, your work cut out for you with the troubleshooting. 
you have to find where that short is and fix it before you plug the module in because this is surely gonna damage the module and it could possibly damage your power supply and even other modules that you have connected to it. This is one reason why I have a little test skiff right here, which I use to test my modules before I plug them into the main system. If something happens, it happens to this little board. And this little converter here is actually pretty good about not even turning on when there's a short. Now, if you wanna be extra careful, if there are diodes in line with your power rails, these are power diodes that are there for protection, you can check downstream from the diodes, right? So I'm gonna to touch the anode of the diode that's connected to negative power and check that with ground. No, no beep. And check that with the cathode of the positive side diode and no beep. So there should be no short downstream from the diodes either. This is also a good way to know which side is positive and which side is negative in case you have a header that's not boxed and keyed and there's no indication. Like this module has a line here, a big fat line indicating minus 12 and the header is keyed and boxed. So there's no way you could plug a correct cable the wrong way here unless you have a cable that's been incorrectly made, which also happens sometimes. So if I see dials here, I can check, maybe even visually just see that the cathode is connected to this side. That means it's probably negative and I can make sure by checking continuity from the diode cathode to the power pin like this. And there you go. This time we do want to beep because we want to see that it's connected. And now from the anode of this diode over here to this side, that means that's positive because positive will be connected to the anode, which is the side without a line. And negative will be connected to a cathode, which is the side of the diode with a line, okay? That's one way. Another way to check, like for example, this module right here, this is the switch resistor VCF. I put in a header that's unboxed. This was one of my first builds and I should have used the box header, but I didn't. And it's not clearly marked on the PCB which side is negative, which side is positive. And there are no diodes. There are ferrite beads, but no diodes. But you do have capacitors, right? And now, assuming the capacitors are correctly oriented and you should triple check that before you power anything up anyway, then the positive side of one capacitor should be connected to the positive power rail and the negative power rail will be connected to a negative side of the other capacitor. So here, by looking at the capacitor, there's no line here, that means that's positive. So negative is on the other side and yeah, there it is. So I'm gonna check from the negative side of this capacitor and there you go. So this is negative. This one, the positive side is right here. So we'll check from that to here and there we go, that's positive. So now we know that negative is towards the panel and positive is away from the panel. Now, as I mentioned, make sure that your capacitors are correctly oriented because if they're not, they will burst and you will get magic smoke and a nasty smell. So triple check that and triple check the diodes, the power diodes, make sure those are correctly oriented as well. Otherwise they won't serve as reference and your module just won't work. And the other thing to check, which is a common mistake people make, is put the ICs wrongly oriented, so upside down. That will surely burn things and generate magic smoke as well. So take a good look at the build guide, the silk screen, or at the printout of the PC board, and just make sure every single IC is correctly oriented. If you have any doubts, go look at a data sheet, ask around, send pictures to friends, but don't turn the module on unless you're sure that the ICs are placed correctly. In DIY, use sockets. I mean, it's just so much easier to pull a chip out with pliers than it is to have to cut the legs, lose the chip, just because you made a mistake, you made a blooper and you soldered it on the wrong way. So yeah, I use IC sockets in everything. A few modules now, they still have the 16 pin power header and I wanted to address that. The way you would check these is the same way you checked the 10 pin, except now you should check the five volt pair as well. So again, make sure the multimeter is still beeping, it hasn't turned itself off, you haven't accidentally changed the setting. And we'll check minus 12 to ground, no beep. Minus 12 to plus 12, no beep. Minus 12 to plus five, no beep. Plus five to plus 12, no beep. 
plus 5 to ground, no beep, and plus 12 to ground, no beep. So that's it, my Drawing Log Test 3 is ready to be plugged in. In fact, this is a good module to have, to test things with too, because it'll give you a reading on the current that your module that you just built is drawing. And if you get extremely high current, probably something is wrong. Another thing that you should do is wear safety goggles if you have any reason to believe something might blow up and keep your finger on the power switch. Make sure you're quick to turn the whole thing off if you smell something weird, if you feel like something is overheating, keep a couple of fingers on a couple of ICs when you turn the module on. And if something starts heating up super fast, super hot, if it burns your finger, something's wrong, turn it off, start checking again. So those are a few of the things that you can do to make sure you don't burn anything when you first connect a DIY module, right? Another thing is consistency. If you're making your own modules, if you're using a strip board or a proto board or designing your own PCBs, make sure that you use consistent labeling. Make sure that you mark things correctly. If you can, uh, draw that key right on the silk screen. If you can, make sure that negative power is always facing down. The red stripe is down. That's an unwritten rule of Eurorack that everybody should follow. That's it. Be consistent, be thorough, triple check everything, and good luck. I hope there's no magic smoke in your future. Oh, there's one more thing that I forgot to mention and I wanted to make sure I did. When you rack up your module, turn off the power. When you're actually putting the module into the rack, if it's powered on, you can easily mechanically touch something, touch the Euro rack reel, for example, that's usually grounded with some powered portion of the module and get a short that way. I've actually burned the LED on my Erica Synth modulator because I didn't power down the system before I racked up the module. So that's the last thing that I wanted to mention. Stay noisy, stay safe, and see you soon.